I once thought that there would be a year when all the fear I had would disappear, an age that I would reach when suddenly I'd be able to preach and I would speak out, reach out to those who disagreed with me and I would be brave, unafraid, all grown up and standing on my own. I'd have it made, no longer breaking out in tears, but it's been years. I'm older now and I am still ashamed of the way I keep quiet. I don't like conflict. I don't like fighting, arguments that turn from disagreement into yelling and lying. I grew up hiding from it, kept it all inside me, thinking later I'd be ready to let them see. I'd be polished, I'd be a scholar. Eventually they'd see my ascendancy, like Hamilton. They'd take me seriously, but the day never came. 1821, they passed by, but I felt the same. Still a scared kid, living under the family name, the family legacy. They kept telling me, Danny, just wait and you'll see. When you're older, you'll agree with me, but see, I'm older now and the world is getting colder. The hate is getting bolder. It's a burden we all shoulder when our country's name is synonymous with violence instead of providence, a land of opposites where we demonize the other side, too charged up to realize that they're our only hope. We'll go broke without a compromise. We need the strength to reach across the lines that divide us, to swallow our pride and see the world through different eyes. See, our side is idealistic. We see a problem and we think that we can fix it. Liberal naivety, maybe, but we believe that we can change. We believe in a world where things won't always be the same, where we are brothers and sisters, and we are willing to risk it, to put it all on the line for the chance to rewind and reset the future. Progressive means we're making progress. Is that a difficult goal to accomplish? Hell yes. But we've seen it work before. Open doors. We've seen desegregation. Seen growth in our nation. Seen women gain the right to vote. And we have hope that we can keep breaking boundaries and keep ourselves afloat. And I've been on the other side. Grew up Republican my whole life. They might have a hard time seeing through different eyes, but they are not all Mr. Trump and his web of lies. They are people trying to survive, supporting small businesses and independent rights, keeping the government out of their homes, attending church and living life. They are afraid sometimes, and that's all right. They keep us grounded. And in return, we keep them from floundering and targeting their fear in places where it doesn't belong. Standing guard outside Target bathrooms, let's move it along, because there are real threats. Women are safe in their bathrooms, but not in their dorm room beds. The judge says six months is enough time for a rapist to serve, and all he's learned is not to drink at parties. Now tell me how that's not absurd. And now there's been another shooting. The worst one in our age. Now that's an issue where both sides need to be on the same page. This is the only place where this happens. And we still haven't made a change because we're afraid that any law we make will take our protections away. But in the meantime, common sense is by the wayside. Even the FBI knew this guy and they couldn't take his guns. Why? Because the NRA won't let them. And it shouldn't be theirs to decide. Two years ago, a gunman came to school and I feared for my friend's lives. He got that weapon legally. He'd given out warning signs repeatedly. His family knew his homicidal fantasies, his admiration for killing sprees. Mental illness was in his history, but all of that was not enough, and it will never be enough for the families of those we lost. We dance for Paul, pray for SPU, but look at the cost. Is this our legacy? Is this what America is doomed to be? Not a place of freedom, but a place of fear and complacency? And all those good guys with guns should agree with me. Let's keep them out of the hands of those who would tarnish your name by taking lives with efficiency. We live in a place where you can be killed for your gender or your race, for the clothes you wear, the lips that you've kissed, for existing in a gay-friendly space. Just face it. We've got an epidemic on our hands. Politicians are making demands for us to keep out the people who are running from their lands to escape the violence. But the evil we're facing isn't coming from Syria. It's here already. It's growing day by day. Incubating in a nation where attacking peaceful protesters is A-OK -okay, and the crowd will praise you for it. We've got to take the log from our eye before we deal with our neighbors. We've come a long way from being slavers, but we've got a ways to go. We've got to reach across the aisle and agree that for the sake of every man, woman, and child, we need a compromise. This is not about winning, it's about saving lives. The compass is spinning and we have to stop taking sides and listen. Listen to the voices of people who have lived it. Listen to those who have witnessed atrocities against their communities. They know when they're in danger. They know they're not included in our unity. They need to be valued and heard, not shouted down at the first word of something you don't relate to. It's true. There's a lot of hurdles to cross over, and there are politicians giving the cold shoulder, trying to gain points by adding to the noise of prideful disagreements, but this is not the time for that.
This is a time for the people. Do you hear them sing when tomorrow comes? Will this country ring with the sound of states that are finally united? Or will we burn out, blinded by our inability to see humanity and those who come from different sides? It's dark out now, but I remember the light, hoping for dawn at the end of this long night. Maybe for now it feels like hell, but love is on the horizon and I won't bid the stars farewell.